Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. In this video we'll break down and simplify 12 recent past exam questions on Chapter 5, Simple Biomechanics. If you benefit from this video consider subscribing to the channel, give the video a thumbs up and check out the complete exam preparation course on Udemy, which contains literally everything you need to excel in your IGCSE exam and nothing more. The 53 individual flashcard videos provide you with mark scheme responses to any question that could be asked and allow you to revise for your exam in an extremely short period of time. Check the link in the description to find out more. Let's begin. Question number one is on topic 5.2 and the links to the short summary videos containing everything you need on chapter 5 are down in the description so go and watch those. Um, if you struggle with a question go and watch the relevant video then come back and attempt it. So the photograph shows a sprinter holding the set position. Identify three forces acting on a sprinter when starting to run for three marks. So a really easy three marks to start us off because the command word here is identify. No explanation or description required. Just name three forces essentially that are acting on that sprinter when they start to run. So I've gone for muscular force, which is produced by the muscles and applied against those starting blocks ground reaction force which is applied by the starting blocks back against the sprinter and propels them forwards and upwards from the blocks and then air resistance. Um, air resistance isn't relevant here while they're in, the, in that set position but it does say when starting to run. So as soon as they start to move air will resist the motion of the performer and air resistance of course increases the faster we move as well. So let's have a look um, the different forces we could have gone for, gravity or weight I didn't mention, and friction I didn't mention there as well. So three of those for three easy marks. Question number two, topic 5.3. The diagram shows a skilled badminton player about to hit a shuttlecock. The badminton player uses levers when hitting the shuttlecock. State two components of a lever. So quite a big introduction to the question, but the meat of the question is to state two components of a lever for two marks, which again is a very easy two marks. There are three components to a lever. They are fulcrum, resistance and effort. And uh, I've got two marks here for resistance and effort. But as you can see, fulcrum, resistance, effort. You could have uh, written pivot instead of fulcrum. That's a different term for fulcrum. Uh, muscular force instead of effort and load instead of resistance. Next question is to explain how two forces act on the shuttlecock when it's moving through the air for two marks. So the previous question on the sprinter um, only asked us to state three forces that acted upon the sprinter. This one asked us to explain how these forces act on the shuttlecock. So a bit more detail required this time, a slightly more difficult question. I've gone for air resistance and I've said that this opposes the motion of the shuttle or acts in opposition, um, in the opposite direction to that in which the shuttle is moving, and it slows the shuttle down. I put that one in brackets because it's not actually required for the mark. This is my explanation here, which is already good enough for a mark, as you can see. And then gravity pulls the shuttle downwards towards the ground. That's my explanation of how gravity impacts the shuttlecock as it's moving through the air. The other force we could have gone for was the force applied at release or muscular force and there's plenty of different explanations for each of these three forces included in the mark scheme. So if you wrote something different to the answers I provided, pause the video here and have a look through the mark scheme and mark your own responses. But we'll move on now to topic 5.3, the next question, so levers again. The diagram shows a performer standing on their toes ready to dive from a diving board. State the class of lever used to achieve this position and draw a label diagram of this class of lever. So by stating the class of lever, we're going to get one of these three marks and then the other two for drawing the class of lever that we've identified. So let's have a quick look at the diagram first. We've got the fulcrum is going to be here between the joints of the toes or the point of contact with the diving board. Then we've got the weight or resistance, uh, which comes from the weight of the body, which would be directed down through the center of the foot here. And then we've got the effort, which comes from the gastrocnemius muscle and the soleus muscle on the back of the calf there, which creates this movement, which is plantar flexion at the ankle joint. So we have fulcrum, then resistance, and then effort. So resistance is in the middle, and that tells us that it's a second class lever. 
Um, when drawing a second class lever, it doesn't matter whether we put the fulcrum on the left or the right, the effort on the left or the right, as long as resistance is in the middle, that's all we need to remember. So two marks for the diagram, one for stating that it's a second class lever, and we'll move on to the next question. Explain how two named forces act on the performer during their dive. So this one follows on from the previous one. So similar to the question with the shuttlecock in badminton, and this one's worth four marks. So the first force I've gone for is muscular force, and then I've gone for air resistance as well. So muscular force, how does this act on the diver? Well, the force applied by the muscles of the diver allows them to push upwards from the board. So the muscles contract at the point of takeoff, and that force applied by those muscles pushes the diver into the air at the start of their dive. And then the second force, air resistance, how does this act on the performer during their dive? Well, it acts against the body of the diver as they fall. And I've put in brackets here, it opposes the motion of the diver. So it acts in the opposite direction of the diver. I could have also said as they accelerate, um, as they're falling through the air, the air resistance force would increase as well. Because, of course, air resistance increases the faster we are moving or as we accelerate. So mark scheme. We could, of course, gone for gravity or weight. That's perhaps the most obvious one to talk about for a diver. Uh, air resistance, uh, drag or friction, and muscular force, the three we could have talked about. So again, pause the video here, have a look at some of the specific explanations that were provided. But we'll move on to question, uh, to our next question, sorry, on topic 5.3, so levers again. The diagram shows an example of plantar flexion. So very similar to the one we looked at with the diving board just a couple of questions ago. Sketch and label a diagram of the class of lever used in the movement from A to B. So we've got plantar flexion at the ankle joint. Um, so again, fulcrum there, that point of contact with the floor or between the joints of the toes. Then resistance from the weight of the body coming down through the middle. Then effort going upwards from the calf muscles, the gastrocnemius and soleus. So again, it's resistance in the middle, and that tells us that it's a second-class lever um, with effort on one end and fulcrum on the other. Uh, but mark scheme confirms that all three components in the correct position, fulcrum, resistance, effort, or effort, resistance, fulcrum, as long as resistance is in the middle, we get two marks for this one. Next question is to identify the class of lever shown in your diagram. We've already identified that it's a second-class lever, so that one's a really easy mark there. Um, next question is to sketch and label a third class lever. This one from a different paper, the 2021 May-June series uh, paper one there. So sketch and label a third class lever for two marks. And uh, this one, we need to make sure that we have effort in the middle. That's the most important thing. So fulcrum resistance can go on either side, but effort is in the middle for a third class lever. Next one, identify two forces that act on a ball when it's kicked and moves through the air. Describe how each force acts on the ball. So this is very, very familiar, similar to the diving question, similar to the shuttlecock question, similar to the sprinter question. There seems to be only a very limited number of questions that get asked on simple biomechanics and talking about forces and how they act on performers or objects as they're um, moving through the air seems to be a very common one. And of course, levers comes up quite a lot as well. The first force I've gone for is muscular force. So the force applied at release. And then my description of how it acts on the ball is the greater the force applied to the football or ball, whatever the ball is, as it's kicked, the greater the acceleration and therefore the greater the distance achieved. And then the second one I've gone for is air resistance. So how does this force act on the ball as it moves through the air? The faster the ball travels, the greater the level of air resistance. Okay, so four marks awarded there, and we'll have a look at the mark scheme. We could have gone for gravity or weight, of course. Gravity pulls the ball downwards or towards the ground. Um, air resistance will slow the ball down as it moves through the air. Um, that's something that I didn't mention. This second point here is the one that I went for about the speed at which the ball travels and how that relates to the amount of air resistance that's applied against the ball. And then force applied at release or muscular force, um, I also talked about. And there's lots of different points we could have included about muscular force for that one. So pause the video and have a look if you want a little bit more of a broader understanding of that question. Uh, but we're back onto levers again. So identify two components of a lever. Second time we've had this question and I've gone for fulcrum and effort. Of course, the other one was resistance. 
The diagram shows a sprinter leaving the blocks. Identify three forces acting on the sprinter leaving the blocks. So again, second time we've had this exact same question. Again, this was the first question we attempted in this video. So muscular force, um, ground reaction force, and gravity, the three I've gone for this time. Um, we could have gone for air resistance as well, that fourth one. Uh, so really simple questions coming up here for chapter five on simple biomechanics. Next question is to sketch and label a simple diagram of the class of lever acting at the ankle as the sprinter pushes off the blocks and identify that class of lever as well. So let's have a look back at the diagram. As the sprinter pushes off the blocks, what type of lever is being used at the ankle joint here? And we should know from our previous example that at the ankle joint, when plantar flexing or pointing the toes down at the ankle joint, um, we are using a second class lever, so I'll reveal that one there. Uh, with the fulcrum, which is the joints between the toes or the point of contact with the toes and the floor um, at one end, then the resistance or the weight of the body in the middle, and then the effort from the gastronemius um, and soleus muscle, the calf muscles there um, at the other end of the lever. And there is our mark scheme there confirming this point. So one for resistance in the middle, and then one for the other two labels correctly uh, positioned, and then one for identifying it as a second class lever. So really easy question there. Clearly, there is a lot of repetition with this chapter, so have a go at this video again, maybe come back and uh, attempt those questions again in a couple of weeks' time. Have a look at my other video on simple biomechanics, the exam question breakdown, and you should be very well prepared for any questions that could come up on this topic. Um, and that was it for this session. But remember to like and subscribe if you benefited from this video and leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for how I could improve them. And as always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you next time for a breakdown of questions on Chapter 6, Health and Wellbeing.